Water for coffee. Now this is a huge topic. This episode is by no means an overview of the whole topic. I wanted to do quite the opposite. I wanted to focus on a few little aspects that I've noticed are simple, applicable concepts in Water for Coffee that often get missed. I'm also aware that the book Water for Coffee that we published in 2015 has been out of print for some time. Now myself and Chris have been trying <laughs> to write a second edition and with everything that's going on in the world, we haven't got round to it. We'd still love to. And what's crazy is that Water for Coffee 1, I guess you'd call it, has become a collector's edition. I don't monitor the price of Water for Coffee on eBay and other online aggregators for reselling secondhand books. But the latest screenshot I was sent by somebody trying to buy edition 1 showed that it was being sold for over £700. Now, however proud I am of what we did with that book, it really isn't worth £700. And if you do have a copy, you know, maybe you should think about reselling it. Maybe you should think about reselling it. What I wanted to talk about today was why you might want to consider using different water for espresso than for filter. Uh, this isn't a new idea. In the first book, we did actually think about having a graph that didn't have an ideal zone for water, but had two zones, an espresso and a filter zone. But it was actually after we wrote and published that book that it really came home to me why they're so different. And it's sort of amazingly simple why espresso and filter are so different. It's because one uses a lot of water and one doesn't use much water at all. Now, part of the reason I think this is easy to miss is because of the way we communicate about different water measurements. Now, the measurements that we take and communicate are done for a good reason. You create a fixed unit or volume of water to be able to compare different waters. So if all waters were the same, if they were all one litre, uh, how many minerals would you have in each of different types of minerals? How much calcium, how much bicarbonate, how much magnesium, how much sodium, potassium, etc. And the most common is probably milligrams a litre, which is what you see on the back of a bottle of water when it's listing the mineral content of that water. So take a TDS meter, for example. Now, we're not going to dig into the pros and cons of a TDS meter in this episode, but it simply measures the amount of movement of ions between the two pins. So it doesn't care whether it's sat in an ocean of water or whether it's sat in a small glass of a 100 mil sample. It's only measuring this space. So why does this matter? Well, what I think happens is that we end up, as a coffee community, discussing different waters without considering the volume we're going to use to make the coffee. Right. So, for example, if we do use a TDS meter and we say I've got a hard water, it's 300 parts per million plus. And next to that, I've got a soft water, which is 75 to 80 parts per million. Now, if all was equal and we used the same amount of each water, well, then, yes, the harder one has more minerals and will have the impact on the flavour of the coffee that you'd expect from a hard water. OK, now for the purposes of this episode, let's just talk about the bicarbonate content in the water. If you have more bicarbonate, you can suppress the acidity more. And if you have less bicarbonate, you suppress it less. So to simplify that, low bicarbonate means more acidic. High bicarbonate means less acidic. So let's start with the same water. Let's say for argument's sake that in this glass, I have moderately soft water with a bicarbonate content of 60 parts per million. Let's start by exploring the idea of using the same water for espresso and filter coffee. OK, so let's say that in this glass I have moderately soft water with a bicarbonate content of around 50 to 60 parts per million. Now, I go to make an AeroPress with that coffee an AeroPress with that coffee, or any filter coffee for that method. And I'm going to use 250 grams of water or millilitres of water. Now for the espresso, bear in mind how much we end up with left in the puck. Let's say I'm going to use 60 millilitres of water, just under a fourth of the amount of water I'm using to make the filter coffee. These are two extremes. And so we're using the same water for these two extremely different concentrations of coffee. And so with espresso, we end up having a lot more coffee to a lot less water. And for the filter coffee, 
that goes the other way. We have a lot less coffee to a lot more water. So what does this mean for the properties in the water? Well, it means with the filter coffee, we have a lot more minerals, purely because we have a lot more water and we have less coffee. So that bicarbonate that is able to subdue acidity, well, there's a lot more of it in the filter coffee. And conversely, there's a lot less of that bicarbonate in the espresso coffee, even though it's the same water. It's, this is deceivingly simple. It's a bit like a hot sauce, right? So if you take some Tabasco and you put a few drops on something you're eating, you get a little spice. And you take that same Tabasco, it's the same strength, but you pour it all over <laughs> your sandwich. Well, and you're in trouble. I mean, it depends on your appetite for Tabasco, but if that was me, I'd be in trouble. Now I've used the same strength Tabasco. I've just used a lot more on the sandwich. And it's the same with coffee. The more water you use in your recipe, the more there are of the minerals in that water interacting with that coffee. If bicarbonate subdues acidity and suppresses acidity, when we make a filter coffee, we use more water, so we suppress more acidity. And when we make espresso, we use less water, so we suppress less acidity. And now I think this is particularly interesting because that's almost the opposite of what most of us would want when we're trying to brew those two different drinks. A filter coffee is so dilute that it's not as strong. Therefore, the acidity is not as strong. An espresso coffee is so strong, so concentrated, that that's often one of the things we're struggling with to get that balanced acidity. Where you end up, and I've seen this, a lot of people who have done tests, blind taste tests, just with simply different waters, hard and soft, have ended up with a similar preference. You end up with a preference for a softer water to make filter coffee and a harder water to make espresso. But the thing is, you're actually not using greatly different waters when you compensate for the concentration. You're probably still using a softer water for espresso, technically, even though you're using a harder water. Does that make sense? If you use roughly four times the amount of water to make filter coffee than you do espresso coffee, well, theoretically, you would have four times the strength of minerals in the espresso water that you start with to compensate for the fact you're using less to be able to correlate the same results across the two. Now this could get into a debate about omni roasting. Now of course the thing about water is it's very hard to discuss water without discussing other aspects of the coffee feedback loop because they will affect each other. Your water changes the way your coffee tastes so it changes the way you roast it and what you like about it and the way you brew it. Now I've never been fully on board with omni roasting. I found myself recently quite liking it with certain coffees. Basically anything that isn't a washed coffee, anything that isn't overly citric, I find I can brew a pretty decent espresso with it. That's not a fixed rule. But if I'm using the same water for filter coffee and espresso coffee, well, I haven't got as many minerals. I haven't got as much of that bicarbonate in the espresso as I do in the filter coffee, even though it's the same water. So am I tweaking that roast to help counteract that. Would I be more into omni roasting if I could change the water more easily across the different concentrations and brew methods? But water is part of that same debate, it has to be. Now to be clear, ever since we did the research, I was adamant that there was not a perfect water, at least some bad waters, some areas you don't want to be. <laughs> but I do believe that different compositions of water are going to benefit not just different roast styles, but more importantly for me, different types of coffee. And so really <laughs> the concentration is adding another complication into trying to figure out what waters taste best with coffee. Now from the beginning of uh, our water project and as we learned about it, it became very clear that there wasn't a perfect water and no one should be able to tell the world this is the perfect water to make coffee with. The whole project is about understanding your water enough to not blame something else and to understand the impact. And then it's up to the individual to decide what they want to do with that impact. You know, whether they have a preference for a, a harder water or a softer water or a water with more magnesium and lower bicarbonate or with more sodium, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But rather than just saying this coffee is floral or it's fruity or it's chocolatey and playing around with the mineral content for the coffee's flavour profile, but for me, this episode is a reminder, for me, as much as it is for you, 
uh, that when you're thinking about the mineral content in a water and how that impacts the flavour of the coffee, how that works with that roast or works with uh, the character of the coffee, whether it's chocolatey, whether it's floral, whether it's really bright and fruity, you have to consider the concentration of the coffee beverage, the amount of water used relative to the amount of coffee used. Okay, the disclaimer here is espresso machine maintenance. The concentration means that actually you may want some more minerals in your water to make espresso with because it's a lot less water to more coffee, but mineral buildup within an espresso machine is a problem. So there's almost a conflict here between the water that's gonna look after your machine with the water that's gonna create the most balanced, delicious shot. And not really sure what the solution is there. So, I mean, have a slightly harder water and descale your machine a little bit more. To summarise this episode, more water means more minerals and less water means less minerals. Espresso uses less water, so there's less minerals. Filter coffee uses more water, so there's more minerals. And that is all with the same starting water. And as ever, if you've enjoyed the video and you have thoughts, please make some comments below. But I will say now that I won't be able to answer uh, all and any question on water for coffee below this video. Uh, there will be more episodes in the future, I'm sure, where we talk about different aspects of Water for Coffee. Thank you very much, and please do like, subscribe, and share.